If you've been to any kind of camp cleanup or trail cleanup event, hi everybody, I'm Rob and this is Storm Crew Overland where we talk about going on adventures, road tripping, camping, and just generally getting out and enjoying life. Now, on this week's episode, we're going to talk about the uh, this event I just attended recently. Uh, it was the Goose Island Cleanup. Uh, it was here in Oklahoma. Uh, I'm in central Oklahoma, basically in the Oklahoma City metro area. Uh, this event took place uh, closer to Tulsa. Uh, it's actually up northeast of Tulsa, I think. Uh, it was at Lake Ugoa. U- I, I, I'm probably not saying it right because it's not my part of the not my part of the area. Uh, Lake U- Ugoa. Uga- yeah. Uh, but there's an island out there called Goose Island. Uh, it's a. I had never been there before. I'd heard of it. Um, I, I'd seen some different people go out there. I knew the Okie Overland guys got there and camp sometimes. Uh, I'd heard Overland Radio. Uh, I'd heard Mike and Lee talk about it before. Uh, they actually refer to it sometimes as Overland Island Radio. It's like one of their favorite places to go camp. Um, and for me, it was just just far enough away that I never quite made it there. I always ended up going somewhere else instead. Uh, especially not having never been there, not knowing what to expect. I always went and checked other things out. But it was definitely on my list of places to go. And I should have gone sooner. But luckily, uh, this event came up. Uh, I'm not exactly sure who was in charge, but it was kind of a, it seemed like, you know, if I'm wrong, I apologize to any of y'all, but it seemed like it was kind of a joint venture between Wander, Oklahoma, with uh, Jeff and Ashley, and uh, Lee with Overland Radio. But they worked, uh, they worked with the Army Corps of Engineers to set up a day that, what, that we could go out there, uh, help clean up the different campsites and stuff in this area. And, and there was some trash out there, believe me. Uh, there was plenty of trash. But uh, we worked with Army Corps engineers. They came out. Uh, they brought a they brought a big dumpster. They brought trash bags. I really this sounds so weird, but just bear with me. They were the nicest like trash grabbers I'd ever seen. I, I've I have an older person that lives in my house, and so we have a, a grabber thing for her to get stuff off the shelves and stuff. And I, I've done some other cleanups and seen some you know trash picker upper things, but these were the nicest ones. I don't know what it was. Uh, they were pretty much all metal. You you could reach down and pick up a bottle cap off the ground real easy, or you could reach down and pick up a glass forty ounce bottle really easy. It was the the best trash picker up was ever. But whatever you don't you yeah, I'm I'm wandering. Uh, but yeah, so I decided to go. I, I thought this would be a great thing. Uh, there were several of us from the OKC area that ended up heading up there. Uh, we had uh, Steve Wolf from the Wolf's Den. Uh, he's got a channel and, and Facebook group and everything. I'll probably try to link that in the comments if I remember. Um, but uh, Crystal and Jerome went down there. There's some other folks coming a lot of the OKC stuff. Um, geez, I know I'm forgetting stuff. Uh, a lot of us, most of us went down uh, Friday night because they were going to start Saturday at 9 o'clock in the morning, and that's early. Considering the fact it's almost, it's two and a half hour drive for me to get there. Uh, so, yeah, two and a half hours, yeah, that's, you're looking at, like, I'd have to leave at 7.30, which means I'd have to get up at, like, 6 or 6.30 on a Saturday. I'm like, you know, I'll just go out the night before camp, and then I'll be there. And it worked out good. Uh, so that's what I did. I, you know, loaded all my stuff up Thursday night, drove to work, had to work Friday, worked, and then uh, left work and headed straight up there. Uh, by the time I got there, most everybody else was already there. Uh, Lee was already there set up. Uh, the other OKC folks were there. Uh, not long after I got there, Jeff and Ashley from Wander, Oklahoma showed up. They started setting up along with their kids. Uh, they have a really cool camping trailer, and I can't remember what it's called, but it's uh, crazy looking. But it was a really neat place. Uh, the, it's like a land bridge to get out to this island. It's just a skinny strip of land that's not really a whole lot wider than a one-lane road. And, in fact, if you look at it on Google Maps, the, the lake must have been really high because it's actually underwater. On, when you look, uh, if you go on Google Maps and do satellite view, uh, you, you can't see the road. You see some trees sticking up along the road, but you can't see the road itself. So that was, that was the first really neat part of getting there. Uh, it's getting across this bridge. Didn't know what to expect. I'm like, based on what I can see on Google Maps, it's underwater. And I'm like, man, um, I wasn't, just wasn't sure what to expect. So... But got out there, drove across, no problem at all. It's, it was a foot and a half above the water or so. Uh, but just kind of a neat entrance to the island. Um, 
start getting in and uh, this this will come important later uh, driving down the island to get to the camping area and stuff there was a very significant mud hole uh, I was not expecting to need to throw it in four low uh, and I did just in case probably really didn't need to but uh, just in case I didn't want to get stuck out there and it would be kind of embarrassing to go out to the event and get stuck before the event even started that we talk about uh, but got through there showed up got to camp I uh, got to meet Lee. I'd never met Lee in person before. I've talked to him online a handful of times. Uh, you know, I watched the Overland Radio Show a lot. But it was nice to finally meet him in person. Kind of got camp set up. Uh, had a drink. Sat and visited with everybody. Flew the drone around. Get some pictures of the area. It's gorgeous. Uh, it's a neat island. A lot of water. I love water. So that just worked out good. Um, the other nice thing... It was rockier than I thought. I'm not just, I'm used to, where there's a beach, there's sand or mud, one of the two. Uh, it was real rocky, which made the water uh, pretty clear. You actually see pretty well in the water. Um, so note to self, I really wish I would have taken a uh, ground cloth for my tent, and I didn't. Uh, it, was, it was fine, but uh, it's the thing I should have brought anyway because of how rocky it was. But after hanging out for a little while, flying the drone around, getting pictures and stuff like that, uh, got camp set up, set up my tent, set up my little uh, privacy tent just in case I needed it. Busted the scottle out and uh, made food. Uh, I'm still working on learning the scottle. It's still kind of new to me. Uh, I'm still trying to get things figured out. But my goal was all my meals I was going to make on the scottle. Didn't bring anything. Didn't bring a regular camp stove. Uh, goal was to make everything on the scottle. On well, the first night. I uh, made carne asada, uh, you know, did the normal scottle thing, had the tortillas stacked around the outside of the, of the scottle, and uh, it was delicious. Uh, it was great. It was great food. But it got, it's getting dark pretty quick because I didn't get out there until almost 7. And by the time I got everything set up, started cooking and visiting, it, it was dark. So I went ahead and, you know, went to bed for the night. Um, I know some of the other folks had issues with raccoons running through campsite and stuff, but luckily I snore loud enough that wildlife stays away. So I don't worry about it uh so the next morning got up nice and early sun was just starting to come up uh, it was gorgeous watching the sunrise coming up all, you know, on the lake shore got up got the scuttle back out made some more breakfast uh, made some chilaquiles Ooh, i have a really good homemade uh, salsa roja i made it's a roasted smoky salsa i uh, made chilaquiles with that it was so good but that and the he had cheese on top and stuff. Uh, so sat there, basically sat on the lake shore, watched sunrise, ate some breakfast. Uh, and by the time I was done cleaning that up, it was time to get started. And uh, I had kind of explored around the area a little bit, and there was definitely, like I said, some a lot of trash. Uh, all the there's so many fire pits. There there'd be a place where within a, a ten foot circle there'd be three or four fire pits, which I don't understand why. Use the one that's already there. But whatever. Uh, but every fire pit, trash in it, glass in it, diapers in it. I mean, all kinds of just weird, nasty stuff. Uh, we found a whole broken toilet out there. We found tons of, we found a lot of clothes, which was weird. Uh, fireworks, I mean, just that kind of stuff. But, but like I said, Army Corps engineers guys showed up. You know, they were, they were so happy to have some help. We went, I mean, the majority of the stuff we picked up is probably no surprise. It's regular trash, it's, you know, beer cans, glass bottles. Please, please, please do not take glass bottles out to these kind of places where people are going to be running around barefoot and getting in the water. It's a, especially if it's extra, you know, really rocky like this. Because one, you can't see the glass. And with it rocky, you're probably going to break the glass if you drop it or throw it or leave it or whatever. Uh, and as, as someone who loves to run around barefoot and hates shoes, please don't do that. I hate broken glass. It's just a huge pet peeve of mine. But, you know, I mean, I can't do anything about it other than go and try to pick it up. So we spent several hours picking up trash. Uh, that was kind of the biggest, that was why we were there, was pick trash up. Um, bags and bags and bags uh, you know big 55 gallon contractor bag of trash I, I picked up three bags i think everybody else picked up at least two or three bags uh throughout the morning we had more people showing up and kept joining in and more helping i think at one point we were we were up to like 10 rigs uh and several of those had more than one person in them so we had 
probably you know, 15, 16 people show up total, uh, which is really good turnout for a cleanup like this. Uh, it's you wish you wish it'd be more, but made a huge dent in the amount of trash that was on this island. Made things look so much better. And the reason this is important, and the reason I'm even talking about it, I mean, at the end of the day, you, you, you may not care that much. Oh, you went camping, you picked up some trash. Talking to the Corps of Engineers guys, this is a place that is beautiful, and you can go camp for free. And it's in Oklahoma, where there's not a, place, a lot of places like that you can even go camp for free. And it's, like, and it's awesome. And you can, you can fish, and it's a great place to go kayaking or, or uh, paddleboarding or anything like that. It's, it's an amazing place. And, and they're having discussions about locking it and shutting it down because of how much trash is out there and how much time and energy it takes the Corps of Engineer guys to go out and clean this trash up. So, one, be part of the solution by not leaving trash out when you go places, which chances are, if you're watching these kind of videos, that's not you. Uh, but if you didn't know, that's the, that's the kind of impact that has. Some people may not be real worried. It's just trash. Who cares? It matters because these places are getting shut down. There are such cool places getting across the U.S. getting shut down right now because of trash, which is ridiculous. And, and two, even if you're not the one leaving the trash, leave it better than you found it. Go out there. Even if you're not on like an organized cleanup thing, you're just going out for a day or one night or the weekend or something. Take an extra trash bag or two. I keep a roll of big contractor bags and gloves in my, in my Forerunner just in case there's trash to pick up. Because I want these places to stay open. I'm, it's a selfish thing. I want to keep going here. I want to keep enjoying this stuff. But we can't do it if there's trash everywhere. We've got to, because of the people that leave it, we have to be even better. We have to be that much better uh, to make up for how trashy these trashy people are. Sorry, I don't like to be negative like that and call people names, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Um, what was extra neat was the, some of the support this event got. So um, it was getting past noon. Uh, it was definitely time for a break. Um, Lee had set up, uh, and his wife kind of brought some stuff out, where they were going to do lunch for everybody, which was super generous of them. Uh, so they sat there, they had chips for everybody, they got hot dogs for everybody. Um, it was nice. I'm not even a big hot dog guy, but after working for hours picking up trash in the sun and getting a, you know, a hot dog right off the fire, it's like, eh, not a hot dog guy, but pretty good hot dog. Uh, anything's better when you're hungry and you've earned it. But what was it after that, uh, they had some people, some companies that had reached out and supported the event. And this is not everyone. I, I'm, I know I can't name everybody. Uh, but uh, Midland Radio had donated some radios to give away. Um, there, was, I, there was stuff from other companies. I can't remember what they were. These were good prizes. Uh, there was like a fire deflector that got on a fire, uh, a solar panel set up. Um, uh, one of the Midland uh, micro radios that goes in your rig that you can do the everything over the, the remote and you can hide it. Um, and I was lucky enough, I won a prize. Uh, it was so cool because last time I did a cleanup, I was the guy running it and I, I, didn't, I, I couldn't win a prize. But I won a pair of uh, Midland um, MXT, I, I, don't, I forget the code, but uh, I won a pair of Midland GMRS radios. Uh, that was really cool because... I might have theoretically been using a form of Chinese radio that was designed for ham radio that someone might have accidentally programmed to work on GMRS channels. Uh, but now I'm legit and I'll be all set for a rendezvous with Ozarks because I have actual GMRS radios. And yes, in case you're curious, I do have a GMRS license and I have a ham license. Uh, I encourage you to get one or both if you're, especially if you're going to use any of those services. A GMRS is so easy not a test you pay a fee and you get a thing that's good for 10 years and it covers everyone in your family um, i don't really think you need ham unless you just want to be a radio nerd and if you want to be a radio nerd go for it nothing against you i have a ham license i'm not i'm including myself in this um, at this point things kind of started winding down uh there was a pretty good threat of some severe thunderstorms that night uh there in the at the island and in that area and uh, 
So I was kind of back and forth, you know, am I going to stay another night? I really wanted to stay another night, but I also didn't like the idea of my, uh, my gazelle tent getting trashed with hail and uh, kind of had my mind made up for me. My wife called, she wasn't feeling real good. My kid had a bunch of stuff going on, so we needed someone to be to run around. So I'd, I was like, all right, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll pack up and head home. So I did and I got home just in time. I was watching radar the whole time and I, man, did some storms blow up and after talking to the guys the next day, I sent some messages to them. Hey, how'd, you, how'd y'all do? They were fine, but they said, yeah, it, it rained pretty good for a while. I would have been fine to stay, but it was good to get home, see my family, spend some time with them before I had to go back to work. And uh, the, the other thing I was worried about, I mentioned the big mud hole going when I was coming in. I was like, man, if we get a lot of rain, that mud hole could get really bad. It would suck if we all got stuck trying to get out of there or if they got enough rain that that land bridge went underwater and they were stuck. So I, when I left, I left instructions like, guys, if it gets too bad, you know, call me and we'll, me and some other, we'll, we'll come out and try to rescue you all. But, and of course, uh, at least one of the guys was like, no, 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 if I'm stuck, don't, don't rescue me. Don't save me. It's gorgeous here. I'll be fine. I don't want to go to work. I can, I can just stay here. But it was a really good time. One, I got to go camp in a great place that was gorgeous, and I got to enjoy that. And I got to hang out with people I already knew, which was also great, too. I, you know, these are people that I really enjoy spending time with, uh, which says a lot because normally I go camp to not be around anybody. Uh, but it was nice being around these people. And the last benefit was I got to meet some new people. I said I never met Lee. I never met Jeff and Ashley from Wander, Oklahoma. And... Uh, uh, Jeff and Ashley, they run the Tulsa Rigs and Coffee, and I run the Oklahoma City Rigs and Coffee, and we keep talking about how we need to, like, I need to come up to Tulsa, or they need to come down to OKC, and we're going to have to make that happen, but one of these days. Uh, overall, great time, and then the, the last part is, we did a really good thing. We cleaned up probably hundreds of pounds of trash off this pretty small island. And, and did a small part to hopefully keep this spot open so people like us can go out there and keep having a good time and have somewhere amazing to camp with gorgeous views. I, I just, I don't know, I can't put it, I can't say it enough. Be involved. Make a difference. Clean up some trash. It's nothing hard. And if you're one of those people that's out there going, man, this is such a cool event. Why didn't I know about it? How did I never hear about this? Or, I wish there was stuff like this around me and no one ever tells me. Or, I always hear about it after. Uh, that's, that's something I hear a lot. Is I'll, I'll post pictures of an event or I'll, something like that or a video. And I'll start hearing from people. Oh, I didn't even know anything about this. Sorry about that. The uh, memory card filled up on the camera. So, I had to delete some footage real quick and come back. Uh, but, yeah. If you're the type that doesn't hear about these events, you, you have to get involved and get to know people. So you know about the events ahead of time. This was posted on Facebook. It was posted in lots of the you know Overland type groups. Uh, so you just have to be involved to hear about these things. And if you are involved, people will ask you, hey, are you going to this? Hey, have you heard about this thing? So do those steps. Get involved. Uh, finally, I mean, that's really all I have for you for this, for this, uh, this week's video, but Get involved, meet people, go do things, make a difference. Uh, it'll make you feel better. It'll make the world better. Do these things. Uh, let's see. My wife is standing behind the camera trying to make me laugh and completely ruining my train of thought, but it's okay. Um, if you are watching this, and if it's if you're watching this before Rendezvous in the Ozarks, uh, big news that I haven't really announced, I'll be in the storyteller section there. I'll also be teaching two uh, wilderness first aid classes. I'll be teaching uh, Thursday and Friday. I think it's at 1 p.m., but check the uh, the app and make sure. And then I don't know for sure when I'll be in the storyteller section, but I'm on the app saying I'll be there. I just don't know what times I'll actually be in the storyteller booth or whatever they're calling it. So uh, Look for me there. Come by. Uh, no promises, but I really, really hope I'll have stickers by then. I do. Come up. Say hi. Tell me, who, you know, introduce yourself. Uh, you know, tell me you're a subscriber, and I will give you a sticker. Uh, if I have them, and if I don't, well, I'll figure it out. I'll shake your hand or buy you a beer. Or I don't know. Uh, 
but hopefully I'll have stickers so I can start giving those away. Um, yeah, so uh, if you're watching this video on YouTube, just realize I also release the audio as a podcast. You can find it wherever good podcasts are found. Just search Stormcrow Overland. Uh, if you are listening to the audio of this, uh, just realize we release the video on YouTube every week. And, uh, just go on YouTube and search Stormcrow Overland. And uh, finally, you can find us on Instagram at Stormcrow Overland. And you can reach me on email, uh, stormcrowoverland at gmail.com. Uh, on any of those platforms, I would really appreciate a like, comment, follow, subscribe, message, anything like that. Uh, reach out to me. Let me know what you think. Um, you know, if you've got a friend you think might like some of this, send them a link. Uh, share it for Share it to them. Whatever. Um, really? I think that's all I have for this week. So, uh, just remember, sometimes you have to go out and get lost. Maybe pick up some trash before you can find yourself. Thanks for watching.